This structure that you see over here where it says NADH, NAD, this is actually the name of the coenzyme that we were looking at in the beginning, the coenzymes that we said were collecting our hydrogens and electrons. Technically, they're, they, the name of the coenzyme is NAD. When it collects those hydrogens, it is NADH. So what you're seeing over here is this was the coenzyme carrying our hydrogens and electrons. And what it actually did is it gave the hydrogens and electrons back to pyruvate. And so now it's only the coenzyme by itself now. It doesn't have the H on it anymore because it gave the hydrogens back. So again, NAD is the coenzyme that was collecting hydrogens and electrons. We, since we chose anaerobic, it knows that we can't cash those out for energy, so it's just going to give them back to pyruvate. And this over here was our pyruvate structure. Remember, we said it's a three-carbon structure with other things attached to it. So this is pyruvate. And if you take a look at what we have over here, this structure is nearly identical to pyruvate, except for the fact that it has these added hydrogens onto it. So lactate is actually what we end up with after the coenzymes give the hydrogens and electrons back to pyruvate. So one more time, when we are choosing our anaerobic pathway, the coenzymes can't do anything with the hydrogens and electrons, so they are going to give pyruvate the hydrogens and electrons back. When pyruvate accepts the hydrogens and electrons from the coenzymes, it actually becomes a structure called lactate. So lactate is just pyruvate with the added hydrogens and electrons onto it. Now this over here is showing us um, the larger picture of this process. So this is our anaerobic pathway. Another name for the anaerobic pathway is the Cori cycle. And we've seen this part happen already. We went through our step of glycolysis, which was glucose to pyruvate. We decided to go the anaerobic pathway, which means we can't cash those hydrogens and electrons for energy. So the coenzymes gave them back to pyruvate. And when pyruvate accepted those hydrogens and electrons, the new structure is now called lactate. Now, at this point, we can't do anything else. With the anaerobic pathway, it basically stops there. We don't have anything else that we can do. Remember, we said that the anaerobic pathway only makes two ATP. But remember, that glycolysis step from glucose to pyruvate made two ATP already. So that's where those 2 ATP come from. So again, the anaerobic pathway only makes 2 ATP, and where it gets those 2 ATP from was from the glycolysis step, the glucose to pyruvate. That made 2 ATP, and that's all the energy that the anaerobic pathway can make. So since the anaerobic pathway can't do any more at this point, one thing that it can do is try to get us to regenerate glucose so that we can perform glycolysis again. Because again, every time we perform glycolysis, we make two ATP. So the purpose of the anaerobic pathway, or what its goal is, is to try to regenerate glucose and force our body to do glycolysis again so that we can make two ATP. And then we're gonna come around again, regenerate glucose, go through glycolysis again, make another two ATP. So again, we're just concerned about regenerating glucose over and over and over again because every time we're back at glucose, we can perform glycolysis again and make another 2 ATP. And that's what we're seeing here. So we ended up with lactate. Again, we can't go any further now since we're anaerobic. That's as far as we can go. So what we are doing instead is wanting to regenerate glucose so that we can per perform glycolysis again and make another 2 ATP. Now, the issue is that we can't reverse this process and regenerate glucose except for in the liver. So if we want to regenerate glucose, we need to send our lactate to the liver and then lac the liver can reverse that process where we reverse from lactate back to pyruvate and from pyruvate back into glucose.
Now that we have generated glucose again, we can perform glycolysis again and make another 2 ATP. So again, just to recap, the anaerobic pathway or the quarry cycle is only going to make 2 ATP. We make those 2 ATP in the glycolysis step. After that, pyruvate will accept the hydrogens and electrons from the coenzymes, and that will create lactate. We can't go any further at this point, so what we want to do is reverse the process and regenerate glucose so that we can go through glycolysis again and make another 2 ATP through our glycolysis step. In order to regenerate glucose, we need to send lactate to the liver. In the liver, lactate can be converted back into glucose so that we can start the glycolysis process again and make another 2 ATP. Now this here is showing us the same thing just in a little more detail. So you see we started with glucose, we made pyruvate. When the coenzymes gave the hydrogens and electrons to pyruvate, what we ended up with was our lactate structure. And then it's showing you that we send lactate to the liver, and the liver can convert lactate back into glucose so that we can go through this process over again.